death of a man's wife, yeah. which is false. I mean, I don't know how you go any lower than that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us today. You were in the same position four years ago today. And you know, you mentioned Bill O'Reilly earlier. Is he's it? right over your back. He's yeah. eyeing you. He's, watching, he's <laughs> eyeing you. Look at him. Look he over. just at you. Are you the one who called him and woke him up early this morning? I woke him up, and okay. uh, I know that he'll have to have a nap this afternoon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Bill O'Reilly never sleeps. Senator, thank you Thanks. very much for joining us live. Thanks a lot. Bill, come on over All here. Right, You're I, next. Now? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Senator, great to see you. Also coming up, in the morning. breaking news yeah. on the economy. <laughs> Brand new jobless numbers out any second, plus Bill O'Reilly. Senator, thank you. There you go. Fox Business Alert for you right now. The Labor Department just releasing brand new weekly jobless numbers, 374,000. First time unemployment claims filed last week. Now that's up a tick from 372,000 the week before and more than expected. The expectation was 370,000. We're joined now by Bill O'Reilly, who's now going to become an economist for us and give us his point of view on right. the weekly unemployment numbers. Yeah, here's my point of view. I don't care about the unemployment numbers. It's not that sounds harsh, but it's you know the same every every month. It's, we're not doing well. I think in the four years from now, the Republican convention should be held on the equator. <laughs> All right, let's this this heat here. I was up what six? I walk out six o'clock. 98 degrees. Yeah, it's okay. There you go. Here's, here's a cooling towel with the Fox News logo on it. Ooh, Somehow, look at it's this. actually cool and moist. Made in Taiwan. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's, that's why the unemployment numbers are no good. <laughs> but, you know, is this a little moist out here? Is it a little moist? It really warm? is. It's the We've summer gone through a lot. We, we first had a threat of a hurricane, right. and now we should just be grateful that we have beautiful sunshine, Bill. Grateful. Can I just yes. give you a little yeah. word of advice? If you yeah. want to make it in this business, you got to toughen up. I do. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And if you would, if I can offer you that, yeah. uh, no one shows to me. This is a Bill O'Reilly statement. 374 it shows to you there's going to be no bailout of the economy for President Obama. These are the marks you're going to have to That's fight right. for. There's two more of these things. They don't really matter. That's what I trying to point. I was trying to get across because the economy is stuck. All right, it's just moribund. Right. And no matter what they say, that's where we are. So you're either going to vote on, well, we need new guys to try to get it started. Or we're going to have more hope that the present guy is going to turn right. it around. That's it. Guys. That's it. One sure. of the new guys was on the stage last night. Congressman Paul Ryan, a young guy, wants to be vice president, and he took on President Obama and the economy. It began with a financial crisis. It ends with a job crisis. It began with a housing crisis they alone didn't cause. It ends with a housing crisis they didn't correct. It began with a tr perfect AAA credit rating for the United States. It ends with a downgraded America. It all started off with stirring speeches, Greek columns, the thrill of something new. Now, all that's left is a presidency adrift, surviving on slogans that already seem tired grasping at a moment that has already passed, like a ship trying to sail on yesterday's wind. So what do you think about that? Because I know at one point you were critical of Congressman Paul Ryan with regard to his budget. No, I, I think he, I've never been really critical of Ryan. I think Ryan's a smart guy. Um, I think that's what he has to do. He has to keep pointing out that, look, uh, this isn't a game. Um, this is the, the downgrade is real. The debt is real, $16 trillion. That's what the Republicans have to run on. Um, they can't get involved with the other stuff. It's really interesting because next week in Charlotte, who are we going to see prime time? Sandra Fluck? Yeah. Sandra Fluck? Are you kidding me? This is what they're putting up against $16 trillion debt? A woman who wants us to pay for Bill. birth control? People need reproductive rights. No, no, but says. it's really interesting. The contrast. And the Democrats obviously feel they're going to get away with it. They feel that this is the winning hand. And I, I look, I, I have to watch all of them. I'm not rooting for anybody, but I'm just amazed. Right. So if Ryan keeps doing that, I think Romney's got a really good chance to win. Now, Romney tonight... What does he do? He's got to sell himself. You know, it's like Chris Christie was actually selling himself, not Romney the other night. He's got to watch Christie and go, you know what? 
I got to do that. Yeah. I wish Ryan, you mentioned my Ryan, name more. Let yeah. Ryan be the numbers guy. And then, you know, and then Romney has to say, look, I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a greed head. I, I'm really interested in you. And then try to sell that point. So should he but, come but out and how, be happy about his? How? How do you sell yeah. yourself knowing his personality? We know for a fact the modesty has gotten in the way. How do you, you do You don't that? have to be immodest to tell people you're not a thug, right? I mean, if somebody's going to accuse you, and which the Democrats are, being just short of a criminal, all right? You don't have to, you can be indignant. You don't have to say, hey, listen. Oh, they're, they're accusing him of being a criminal? Of everything. And yeah. we've all heard it. So if I'm the governor, I get out there and I'm a little indignant. I say, listen, this isn't who I am. Here's my record. This is what I've done in my life. And these people are going to lie about me. Let them. All right? But I want you to know this is who I am. That's not conceited. Sure. That's not immodest. I mean, that's setting the record straight. Right. You know, one thing about Paul Ryan, I, I thought he gave great political speech last night, and you know we learned a lot about him. It was emotional. You saw his mom, Betty, up in the stands. He wiped away a tear at one point. And the other thing is, what he has brought to the ticket is the dialogue has changed. It's not just all about negative ads and you know I want to see Mitt Romney's taxes. Now we're talking about big stuff. Suddenly America is talking about okay, maybe Medicare is going bankrupt, and who's going to save it? Look, those issues have to be paramount. I think I thought Ryan was a good choice. All right, and they picked their number one draft pick. Uh, yeah. They didn't go for the conservative I think, I choice. Think it was a good choice. Condoleezza Rice, for me, was the money was the money speaker. I thought she was awesome. Here's an example. I want to get your take. Dictators in Iran and Syria butcher their people and threaten regional security. Russia and China prevent a response, and everyone asks, where does America stand? Where does America stand? You see, when friends or foes alike don't know the answer to that question unambiguously and clearly, the world is likely to be a more dangerous and chaotic place. It's interesting because a lot of the focus, Bill, in this campaign cycle has not been about foreign policy. And it won't be. Or, or, yeah, right. But should it be? No. No. I mean, this country is really in serious economic trouble. Yeah. And until we write that, the foreign policy's got to take a back seat. Before you go, you got to tell everybody about your new book, Lincoln's Last Days. I know it's the number one book out in the entire planet right now for kids who are going back to school and need yeah, to know what the heck. Well, we wrote this for Kill Me, basically. Thank uh, you. Because I, I got stuck on page nine. Yeah, uh, age, killing the Lincoln. adult book, Killing Lincoln, a little right. bit too much for Brian. So we kind of can. <laughs> made it print bigger Thank lots of pictures right all right I appreciate that it's called Lincoln's last days what's really gratifying about this is teachers all over the country are ordering a book for their kids uh, fourth grade to ninth eighth in that range because it, it's fun and you got to reignite children's interest in their country Absolutely. and the best way to do this is the best president ever Abraham Lincoln right so books Lincoln's last days got off you know as you said number one uh, nonfiction juvenile in the country and we're very pleased with that. and right. you got a and great and kill me loves it right give me a blur <laughs> although I don't like the way it ends <laughs> no well you know that's the way you can't adjust the end <laughs> the blurb was so good it was I've never read a book in my life except this one and I love it right. oh, and, but, but, it, but, it, but it never made the cover why didn't you keep I, that I know I have that I'm you holding it in reserve oh, from the, the paper back, back, back. For the paper yeah. That was the real blurb that you gave. Uh, the real blurb was, uh, I am the anti-Bill O'Reilly, <laughs> and I don't like to read. I like people read too I thought it would That's say, right. even though he mocks me every time he sees me, I still right. like him. Uh, yeah. Bill O'Reilly <laughs> just got a great endorsement from Democrat Joe Trippi. He said, it kills me, but I read it, and it's awesome. Yeah, he likes killing Lincoln, and October 2nd, killing Kennedy. Hi. We'll be here to talk about it. But if you hadn't read Killing Lincoln, try to do so because it sets up Kennedy. So many parallels right. between the assassination of Lincoln and assassination of Kennedy. All right. Uh, I'm hearing from the control booth four years from now. We're not going to be on the equator for the no, convention. We're going to be We're going to be on the surface of the sun. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you guys are doing a great job here for all this time. And they very rarely sweat. And Carlson never, never sweats. Ladies and gentlemen, right. glowing. Right. Yeah. That's Until I get on the treadmill. But right. thank you very okay. much. Thank you, Bill. All right, guys. Uh, okay, we got to do some headlines if you don't. Hey, mind. Bill, what are the chances of us hanging out? Because we might have some free time later. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, you work on you that relationship. No. I'm gonna update. Well, there's people. no working on it. I'm gonna That's update it. people about the tropical depression now because it's still called. It gets Isaac. me depressed. <laughs> and it's expected to become.